Hello YouTube, and welcome to the next episode of the Godzilla Vlogs, where we talk about anything and everything Godzilla. Now for this episode, we're going to get to a topic that I promised I'd get into on a couple episodes previous when I talked about the future of the Godzilla franchise, Legendary Pictures Godzilla franchise. Here I am, I'm going to talk about it, and that is what I would have changed with Godzilla 2014. Um, believe it or not, uh, despite what I made it sound like in that video, I wouldn't change too much. However, what I would change would be very significant in terms of the overall structure of the movie. Um, I wouldn't have changed Godzilla's character. In fact, I would give him, I'd still keep the same amount of screen time that he has in the film, believe it or not. I would still have it be very much so in terms of the monsters wise, I'd still have it very much so the Mutos. Them being the characters in Godzilla then coming in. I would have kept that the same, actually. Um, that's because what I do for the next film is I'd have that be Godzilla's film. What was the biggest mistake that Godzilla 2014 made? And I'm glad I'm not the only one who thinks this. Um, and if you disagree, feel free to disagree with me. Again, this is all just my opinions and this is my thoughts. Where G2014 went a little wrong, well not wrong, it just missed a major opportunity, was it killed off Brian Cranston's character too early. Now, Brian, Brian Cranston's character is by far the most interesting thing, or the most interesting human character about the film, because let's face it, we have Ken Watanabe's obsession with Godzilla, that's interesting, but it wouldn't carry a movie, um, unless they went into it a little more in further films. Uh, and Aaron Taylor Johnson's character was way more focused on the action to really get too, too much of a character, which that alone isn't a bad thing. To be honest, I very much so like Aaron Taylor Johnson's character. Um, he's a very proactive character, and that's more I can say than some characters in other Godzilla incarnations. Um, he was a very proactive character, and at the same time, I really understood what he was going through. I mean, he was very family orientated, so I, I liked that. I liked that about him a lot. I liked the fact that he was in the Navy. I kind of found him to be a little bit of a Mary Sue, except a male version of that. I don't know what that term is. I don't know if it's the same term or not, whatever. Where it's like he got involved with everything. I wish he stuck with the Navy more, but other than that, I really, I really enjoyed his character. I like the fact that he was doing this for his son, he was doing this for his wife. I very much so like that. He was a family man, kind of the every American kind of character. And that's why I want to see him come back in other in the, in the future Godzilla films. Because you can do a lot with his character, I believe. However, let's talk about why the main thing that I change. And that is Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston's character is so interesting right from the get-go. He was very intriguing, and you wanted to learn more about him, but you never got the chance to do it, unlike Dr. Sarazawa from the original Godzilla. You never got a chance to do that with Brian Cranston, because quite frankly, he died too early. He also has the most emotionally charged scene in the film, and that's the Janjira accident sequence. That is a very good scene. It's, it's full of tension, um, it's full of pain, it's full of anguish, and Brian Cranston God bless him, does such a good job with that scene. Just look, the look on his eyes and everything when he's seeing his wife die right in front of him when those doors are closing. Props to her as well, the actress, I forgot her name, but the actress there too, she nailed it. The little wave and the smile she gives right as the doors close. Wonderful stuff. And it's no surprise in my mind that that's the scene that Frank Darabont wrote. <laughs> because that is very much so a, an emotionally charged scene. And that's what Frank Darabont is very, very good at, quite frankly. Um, the Green Mile Shawshank Redemption. So, Brian Cranston already, we have this intriguing kind of tragic backstory. We already have it where he clearly doesn't pay enough attention to his son as it is, which is Aaron Taylor Johnson. He doesn't pay enough attention to his son. He's too focused on his work. Because, like, it was his birthday, Brian Cranston forgot it was his birthday, and his son planned all this stuff for him, and he paid, and Brian Cranston paid no attention to it. Actually, that kind of inspired one of my character's backstories from the Godzilla saga, believe it or not. Uh, the character Nick Adams. and The character Glenn Adams, sorry. So, so I kind of took it from that and I went a little further with it. But, you know, that's all good character stuff. That's not just good character stuff. That's wonderful character stuff. And I, the, one of the things that I liked about it so much was that a lot of it wasn't really in your face either. A lot of it was stuff that you noticed in the background. And it's Gareth Edwards. Gareth Edwards does that shit extremely well. Um, look at Monsters. Uh, he, that's his forte. And that's why I love him so much, is that it's not blatant shoved down your throat. It's a lot of it's just stuff that you notice in the background and subtlety. And that's one another thing that Gareth Edwards is usually pretty good at. 
um, is, is subtlety. Um, again, look at the relationship between the two main characters and monsters. A lot of that was not done through dialogue, it was through eye contact and stuff like that, or little motions they do in the background. Again, that was all built up from subtlety. Uh, and something very similar to Ishiro Honda, believe it or not. But then his wife dies. And when Brian Cranston's wife dies, I love it how there's like a switch that turns his head and it jumps several years in the future. And now Aaron Taylor Johnson was, joined, the, joined the Navy. Um, and, you know, that's a great thing about Aaron Taylor Johnson's character is that, yes, he has a wife and a kid. But you ever really want to feel like you have like a family or something you want to belong to? A lot of people who join the army or the, just the armed forces in general join because they want a family. Not just because it's a good thing. They join because they want the discipline. They join because, you know, they, it's basically a family away from home. And even if, you, if you're joining for different reasons, you wind up forming a family with those who you serve with. Or at least that's what they tell me <laughs> over and over and over again. <laughs> I've had that. Told, I've had that said to me so many times by so many different people from different branches, it's not even funny. So yeah, it was interesting that Aaron Taylor Johnson chose that, that career path, um, considering the fact that he hasn't really had a father figure in his life. And you see, that kind of goes into what I change. Brian Cranston just almost completely pushes Aaron Taylor Johnson, his son, his, his only son, out of the way in order to obsess over what the hell killed his wife, and he thinks he's found it. But he gets arrested, and then Aaron Taylor Johnson goes back. I would have kept all that the same. Literally, like, the first 10 to 15 minutes of this movie are wonderful. <laughs> I would have kept everything the same. Right up, and even through the Mudo, when the Mudo hatches, I'd keep that. Um, I'd keep almost all of that the same. Great stuff, great character stuff. And what I like is that, you know, when Aaron Taylor Johnson sees his dad, the dialogue isn't like, are you okay, or are you good or how have you been it's been forever it's I gotta go back Brian Cranston's dialogue is I gotta go back to work he's obsessed over that and you can clearly tell that he's kind of lost his marbles by the way his hair is all strewn out and everything like that and when when he go back to his little hut there in Japan you can see that there's stuff all over the walls and everything like that he's kind of lost his marbles and I love Aaron Taylor Johnson's reactions to that as well where I change it because I, I love that backstory and the fact that Aaron Taylor Johnson doesn't really have a father figure <clears throat> and that's never really resolved in the movie, unfortunately, is when the Muto attack, I would have kept Brian Cranston's character alive. That's the thing. That's the biggest difference. I would have kept Brian Cranston's character alive. I also would have kept Aaron Taylor Johnson in the picture more as well. Um, Aaron Taylor Johnson still would have been there. However, the film would have focused way more on Brian Cranston himself because I'd feel it would be better stepping stone for G2018 with Aaron Taylor Johnson staying in that film and then that film in terms of the human characters focuses on Aaron Taylor Johnson. In G2014 I felt like the film should have focused on Brian Cranston as a character as our main protagonist and Aaron Taylor Johnson as um, not the side character but the supporting character if that makes any sense. I mean still have Sarah Zawa and his assistant there and that totally badass admiral, but, you know, have, have them there. Uh, f f and what I mean by that is I still, like, keep the scenes with, like, the bridge and Aaron Taylor Johnson and the bridge transporting the nuke. I would have loved that in the film. Quite frankly, that's one of my favorite scenes in the sequence, and one major reason why I love um, Gareth Edwards in general is because of that scene. That scene is really atmospheric, and not much is actually shown. But, yeah, you feel it at the same time. However, I would have focused way more on Brian Cranston. And therefore, I would have had Aaron Taylor Johnson in the background, kind of, starting to get to know his father. That relationship would form in this film. And all of a sudden, you have Aaron Taylor Johnson, who hasn't had a father figure really before, that we know of, starting to reconnect with his father. And that's where the character would start coming out. You start discovering why his father went so insane. Aaron Taylor Johnson starts understanding why, um, why uh, his father did what he did. And that's because Brian Cranston loved his wife so much. That's actually the underlying theme, I think, of Godzilla 20, 2014. That is, it's not nuclear allegory. It's nothing like that. It's not nature. I think the most prominent theme in the film his family. Because in the film, Brian Cranston's last lines says, 
go home to your family, keep them safe. Whatever it takes. And he says whatever it takes multiple times throughout the film. I love that line. I love the fact that that line is brought up several times during the film. Um, as Brian Cranston says it a couple times, whatever it takes. Um, that kind of is his character in a nutshell, and I would keep that character in what I change. So you have... Um, so it, it would basically have then turned into basically a, a reconnection of the family. Because what's tragic about the Brody family is that it has been completely torn apart by these Mutos, or these Kaiju. That's what I play on. You know, I play into that through these Kaijus they were torn apart, but yet through Godzilla they were brought back together. Does that make any sense? Um, and I'd still have um, uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson looking for his family. I still would have that, um, and everything like that. And what I would do is I probably would have kept Brian Cranston more so with Aaron Taylor Johnson. I would have had him travel with him as an expert, you know, like as a consultant. I would have had him kind of like Sarah Zawa, but Sarah Zawa kind of stayed behind the lines with the generals. I would have had Brian Cranston become the kind of field consultant, the person who's out in the field and everything like that. I would have had him there with Aaron Taylor Johnson. And I would have included several dialogue scenes between the two characters. I would have kept several dialogue scenes, not so much in-your-face stuff, but very subtle stuff. Stuff, the way how they look at each other, the way how they shake hands, or the way how they embrace one another. Something along those lines I would have kept to show that despite the fact that they have kind of they've had such a rocky relationship beforehand, they do still love each other and they still are family. Because quite frankly, that was an arc that was being built during the first first act of Godzilla 2014, and when Brian Cranston's character is killed, it's completely dropped. It, 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 it quite frankly left the film, I, I kinda wanna say motiveless, if that makes any sense. It left the film lacking an underlying current, and that, again, that's my biggest problem with the film, is the death of Brian Cranston led to that kind of lack of motive throughout the rest of the film, or that lack of an underlying theme throughout the rest of the film, or that underlying current as to why Brody's doing that. Yeah, he has his family, but that wasn't quite strong enough. You had He never really resolved his relationship with his dad or anything like that, so that's why all this happened. It was a huge character moment that could have been great for both Aaron Taylor Johnson and his father and it's completely dropped, and that's the problem. And so I would add that back in. I'd keep, I'd keep them alive, working together on the field and everything like that, and then bonding and reconnecting through this. And what I would do, it may be cliched, but I think thematically it would work better with what I think they're gonna to try to do with the rest of the Godzilla series, is at the end with the nuke, I would change that as well. Um, I would also make it to a place somewhere in Nevada that wasn't a big city, because quite frankly that is such a stupid thing that they did, the fact that they want to blow this thing up in the, in the middle of a major city. Still full of people, by the way. Still full of people. That never made much sense to me and had a million plot holes, so I, I would change that to another location. Um, but that's, that's, some, that's something else entirely. The biggest thing is still with Brian Cranston and Aaron Taylor Johnson. And what I would do is, by the end, I would have it, you know, the whole thing with those soldiers trying to get the nuke over there, I would have had a scene very similar to that. Um, a scene actually almost exactly the same, and they all get killed, and it winds up falling down to Aaron Taylor Johnson. I would also have his father there, and what happens is they're getting ready to detonate this nuke, right? And what happens is Aaron Taylor Johnson kind of does what he did in the movie. He's getting ready to load it and everything. He's putting in the codes and everything. It's really tense and really dramatic. But all of a sudden, Brian Cranston knocks him out. Does something to knock him out. You know what I mean? And he saves his son. And as his son's coming to, because of this new relationship that has been formed between the two of them, this bond that quite frankly, has been established now with all these scenes with them together, of them reconnecting, of, of uh, Brian Cranston truly becoming the father figure that Aaron Taylor Johnson needed. As Aaron Taylor Johnson's coming to, 
that's when you see Brian Cran that's when Brian Cranston leans down to his son as he's getting ready to be evacuated and goes, Go home to your family, keep them safe, whatever it takes. Because then thematically it would have come full circle. What I mean by that is that you have Brian Cranston, who never really loved his son completely, just because of his situation with his wife and his obsession with that. And yet Aaron Taylor Johnson, who never really loved his father. Now that they love each other and they've become a family again, and they've, quite frankly, I wouldn't say become friends, but they've, they've truly understood each other. At that moment, it would establish the fact that these two, despite their differences, despite everything, are now family. And that Aaron Taylor Johnson no longer looks at Brian Cranston as, as, you know, his crazy father that he never really had or that crazy annoying old man, but his actual father, the father he cared about, the father he loved, the father he never knew he really had. And it would have made it so much more tragic, that decision where Brian Cranston goes out and decides to put himself above his son. Something I don't believe Brian Cranston would have done before that. Truly. I don't believe Brian Cranston would have done something like that before that. And quite frankly, that's something that they wasted, is that Brian Cranston just yells forward and then something falls. There's no saving each other there. It was just, oh look, that fell and now I'm dead. That's what happened. It kind of reminded me of the bridge falling on the captain in Star Trek Seven Gen Generations. <laughs> Except done a little bit better. <laughs> but... Um, but anyways, that's what I would have done, and I would have made that affect Brian, uh, affect Aaron Taylor Johnson, and it would have made that scene where his, where he is reunited with both his son and his and his wife, much more impactful. And it also would give a reason why, a great motive, why all of a sudden, you know, Brian, or why Aaron Taylor Johnson would come back into the next film. And, and then the next film would focus on Aaron Taylor Johnson as a character and how reconnecting with his father and searching for Godzilla and all that shit and caboodle, all of that affects him as a character. That's what I would have changed. That's what should have happened, quite frankly. Because Brian Cranston had, Brian Cranston had so much potential, had so much intriguing, interesting stuff around him. And the themes between him and his son throughout the first act of the film were so good and so golden. And suddenly it's just dropped. As soon as Brian Cranston dies, it's just dropped. And so I would have added it back. I would have kept Brian Cranston alive till the end. Um, and everything would have kind of flowed as it was, them bonding and everything like that. I believe I've rambled about that quite enough. I believe you get the point. Hopefully you do. If you don't, feel free to ask a question in, in the comments below. I can't get into much detail. Because in terms of each scene, this exact thing would happen. I, I couldn't do that because, quite frankly, I haven't thought that far. Because, quite frankly, this isn't my movie. <laughs> this isn't this isn't my franchise. Um, this is I can't I can't go back and change anything. This is just my thoughts of the biggest thing that I would change. Or actually, believe it or not, I think that's the biggest thing you should change is keep Brian Cranston alive. Even Brian Cranston himself has said, I should, he should have been kept alive. Uh, at least until the end of the movie, because he even agreed that he had the most intriguing character of the film. And he was truly the, the, the driving force of the film, quite frankly. And all of a sudden he dies. But I would have kept Godzilla's character the same. I would have kept the focus on the Mutos there. Um, everything like that. I, 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 because personally, it never really bugged me. It didn't bug me that Godzilla had so little screen time. True, it really didn't. Um, even even during the scene where Godzilla first shows up to fight the Muto, and then all of a sudden it cuts to the stuff on television, that didn't bug me. Uh, um, truly, it, it really didn't. Um, I laughed, <laughs> um, but that's what I thought they were going for. I know it, and I understand why it bugged so many people. I truly do, but I'm okay with it. I was okay with Godzilla's character. Uh, in fact, I loved Godzilla's character. Oh. I would do this. You know the scene where, where Godzilla locks eyes with Aaron Taylor Johnson? I would have replaced Aaron Taylor Johnson during that scene, and I would have had Brian Cranston's character there instead. I think that would have had more of an impact. Uh, with Brian Cranston's character locking eyes with Godzilla, that would have had more of an impact. So I would have had that there instead. Um, I forgot to mention that up, so I just brought it up now. <laughs> 
So anyways, I don't know how long this video is. I think I've rambled on enough. But that's what I'd change about Godzilla 2014. Um, so do hit the like button, leave a comment telling me what you changed. I'm very interested to read about these. Comment what other videos you'd like me to talk about in terms of Godzilla vlogs. Go on Facebook, like my new movie, Which Way They Walk, which will resume production in February. February, yep. <laughs> um, and then like, I always get February and November accidentally mixed up, and it bugs me like there's no tomorrow. Go on Facebook, like AM Productions for all up-to-date information about what we do and all the current reviews and everything like that. Before I said, hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe. And, uh, yeah, in the end, this is Adam Noyce of AM Productions saying, sign up.